Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make detailed videos about evolutionary developmental biology of goldfish. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evo devo. In this episode, I will explain the advantage of using goldfish as a model organism for developmental studies. To fully understand the benefit of goldfish in developmental studies, we must take a brief look at its historical rise and fade in the developmental biology of goldfish. In previous episode, I explained that breeders and fanciers bred and maintain goldfish for ornamental purpose and goldfish have a tolerance to low oxygen conditions. Additionally, goldfish distribute almost all over the world. This indicates anyone can access this fish. Thus, a number of researchers have used goldfish for experimental materials. Of course, goldfish have been used as a research material for developmental biology. However, zebrafish have been more intensively investigated recently. Indeed, sophisticated techniques for molecular developmental biology are established in the field of zebrafish study. There are several reasons why researchers prefer zebrafish rather than goldfish. First, goldfish require long periods of time for maintenance and spawning. In contrast, zebrafish became adult around 3 to 4 months after fertilization. This difference in the life cycle duration is crucial for researchers who want to employ genetic approaches. Second, goldfish spawn larger eggs than zebrafish. This is important to conduct embryonic manipulation, but this lost its significance once the technology was established in zebrafish. Third, goldfish provides no obvious benefits to researchers who want to investigate molecular developmental systems partly due to the phylogenetic closeness with zebrafish. Moreover, I already mentioned that goldfish have duplicated genome. This causes a complicated problem in the identification of orthologous genes. If your research goal is to obtain accurate and efficient results as quick as possible, which model organism would you prefer to work with, goldfish or zebrafish? I suppose most of you would prefer to use zebrafish due to its convenience and well-established genetic tools. But why am I studying goldfish? I will explain the advantageous points and the potential of goldfish for evo devo study. To better understand the benefits of using goldfish as an evo-devo model, it's important to consider the differences between zebrafish and goldfish. Of course, breeders established several different types of zebrafish strains, but the phenotypic variation of zebrafish strains, which are established by breeders and fanciers, are not so much. It depends on purpose of research, but most of zebrafish mutants were often kept for purpose of studying their genes and their functions. Researchers keep zebrafish because it is easy to apply gene modification techniques. And in such cases, it is very rare that the researcher keep zebrafish with strong intention. I want to keep only beautiful zebrafish in my lab. Of course, there are some researchers who use zebrafish for evolutionary research, but the majority of them are more interested in the genes and the cells than in the appearance. On the other hand, goldfish breeders are less interested in genes and cells, and have been trying to keep beautiful goldfish based on their visual inspection. In other words, goldfish mutants are the result of years of artificial selection based on human visual inspection. Some researchers are studying experimental evolution using flies and microorganisms. In the case of goldfish, we can say that the old breeders have already done the experimental evolution for us. I am interested in studying about how the morphologies of living things change through selection from an embryological perspective. So for me, goldfish seems to a very good research material to study how selective pressures change development and morphologies, even though it takes a little effort to keep goldfish in aquarium tanks. 
Further, let's take a look at how goldfish stand apart from other domesticated animals in the context of its use as a model for e-body. Domesticated mammals and birds such as dogs and pigeons have been used as a model in recent research. These animals often exhibit a wide range of morphologically diverged traits with quite unnatural phenotypic features. Studies have explored the genomic backgrounds of these diverged phenotypes, increasing our understanding of the relationship between human activity and the evolution of genotype genes and the genomes. However, it is difficult to investigate the developmental process of mammals and birds since the observation of their embryos requires highly sophisticated techniques. Mammal embryos develop inside of the mother's body and the birds' eggs are covered by their hard shell. So using these animals is really challenging to investigate how genotypes and phenotypes are related through the developmental process even though they have attractive phenotypes. On the other hand, goldfish have unique advantages as a model organism for investigating embryonic developmental processes due to their ease of handling and observation. While breeding and spawning goldfish may be more challenging than with zebrafish, it is still considerably easier than investigating the embryos of mammals and birds. Furthermore, the well-documented historical background of goldfish domestication provides a reliable reference for understanding the time periods required for changing visible phenotypic features and related developmental processes. Here I can summarize three advantageous points of goldfish, highly diverged morphological features, ease of embryonic observation, well-documented historical background. The answer to the question why am I studying goldfish is that the extreme morphological features of goldfish provide a unique opportunity to investigate how strong artificial selection changes the developmental processes. Almost no part of the planet today is untouched by humans and almost all living things are affected by humans. By examining how the strong artificial selection to ornamental goldfish by breeders in the past has changed the developmental process, we can reveal new perspectives on the evolution of the form of animals, not only the past but also in the future. I'm interested in understanding the form of animals in our future and therefore I'm studying goldfish in my lab. It is time to say goodbye. I hope you learned something new about the goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch next episode. See you soon.